Welcome to Parent Data by Emily Oster. This is Emily. I'm a professor of economics at Brown University and a mom of two. I write a newsletter called Parent Data, and on this podcast, I'll read it to you. If you want to read the newsletter yourself and see more of my writing on parenting and pregnancy, you can sign up for free at www.parentdata.org. You'll get reader stories, Q&As, and other special features in your inbox that I don't share here. And now for today's newsletter. One thing you're not told about breastfeeding is that the logistics are a pain in the butt. This is especially true if you're pumping and feeding with bottles. It's easy to become consumed with the complexities of storage and freezing and mixing and using. In our house, we had a pretty complicated rotation system for the bottles, trying to make sure there was enough milk, but not so much that it spoiled. On top of this, there is the constant fear of wastage. I adventure many of us who pumped at work have the memory of moving a little too quickly and finding milk spilled on our desk, computer, and clothes. It's sticky, and all the pumping effort was for naught. But wastage can also come from an open freezer, or from a baby who wasn't really as hungry as they seemed to indicate, and only drank two ounces from a four-ounce bottle. The CDC has extremely strict rules for breast milk. It can be left for four hours at room temperature, four days in the fridge, up to 12 months, six months is better, in the freezer. You should never refreeze once defrosted, Do not mix multiple temperatures of breast milk together. Do not add warm milk to cooled milk. And if you start a bottle, use the rest within one or two hours or throw it away. In an ideal world with unlimited milk supplies and no logistical problems, these seem like plausible regulations. But in the real world, they can be a challenge. And as a result, among the most common questions I get are, what is the data behind this? What if I, heaven forbid, put the bottle back in the fridge and feed my kid again with it four hours later? What would actually happen? Today, I'm going to dive into this whole landscape of breast milk storage and usage. I talked a couple of years ago about refreezing, but I'll revisit that here. And I'll also talk about storage times, mixing, and reusing a partially used bottle. A note is I'm going to be very focused on storage today, but to the semi-related question of whether you can shake breast milk, the answer is yes. And I'd refer to you to Solid Starts for some excellent blog entries on that. Let's start with the big picture, bacteria. Underlying all of the CDC rules is a concern about bacteria. Breast milk, like all substances, has bacteria in it. These can come from the breast, from the air, from handling, etc. If the bacteria is pathogenic, say something like staphylococci, and if it multiplies to high enough levels, it could make a baby sick. It's important to note that the levels really matter here. There is bacteria everywhere in everything, even some bad bacteria, and at low levels, it's mostly okay. There are guidelines about how high the concentrations can be before they cause a problem. Generally, freshly pumped breast milk has low concentrations of bacteria, far, far below the level that would be an issue. When breast milk is stored, bacteria have a chance to multiply. This growth is faster at higher temperatures. In addition, if you start with more bacteria, the load is higher, even with the same growth rate. It is widely understood and accepted that if you left breast milk out on the counter in the summer for four days, it would be spoiled. It would smell bad, it would taste bad, possibly be dangerous. It's also widely accepted that leaving it out for an hour is fine. The question on all of these exposures is where the line is. What does the data say about whether the CDC guidelines are necessary to keep bacterial growth low enough to be safe? Question one, how long can breast milk be left out or stored? The answer to this question is necessarily going to depend on the temperature. Bacteria grow more quickly when it's hotter. This question is also eminently answerable since we can study breast milk directly. An exemplar paper is one which took samples of milk from 16 women and studied the bacterial growth at varying temperature and time frames up to 24 hours. In these data, the researchers showed that at a temperature of 59 Fahrenheit, there was minimal bacterial growth even by 24 hours. At 77 degrees, though, the minimal growth was maintained only for four to eight hours. At 100 degrees, even four hours saw considerable growth. This suggests that even in quite a hot room, a period of storage in the range of four to eight hours would be acceptable. Similar data from Nigeria showed that storage for nine hours in tropical conditions did not generate bacterial loads that exceeded acceptable levels. At refrigerator temperatures, storage is considerably longer. 
There are review articles pointing to no appreciable bacterial growth at four days with storage at typical fridge temperatures. In the freezers, measurement at six weeks and longer do not show bacterial growth. Generally, the concerns with long-term freezing are slow decline of vitamins, and also eventually the breast milk taste is effective. What we have from this literature is a sense that over some reasonable period, several hours left out, several days in the fridge, breast milk bacteria loads are stable. What we do not have much of a sense of is limits. In the studies of refrigerated milk, we see little bacterial growth at four days. Does this mean eight days is fine? Twelve? Longer-term analyses of the question of where is the limit is just missing. Question two, can I refreeze breast milk if it thaws? This question is especially important in my view because sometimes breast milk thaws by accident. When I wrote about this last time, it was in response to many people asking what they should do if someone in the house left the freezer door open and the milk defrosted overnight. This is a question that can be studied using donor milk in carefully controlled conditions. In one 2006 paper, authors look at both bacterial load, measure of pathogens, and vitamin and fatty acid content in milk treated in various ways. In addition to their analysis of storage without freezing, they also consider what happens if you take milk that's frozen, thaw it, and refreeze it. The frozen, thawed, frozen milk does not show an appreciable bacterial load. It is an order of magnitude lower than the FDA limits. A 2016 review article draws broadly similar conclusions, though notes that deep freezing for lengthy periods may impact the nutritional content. There's some human judgment here. If the freezer is left open while you're on a two-week long trip, you do not want to refreeze the milk. But if it's open overnight and everything thaws a bit, there's nothing in the data that would suggest you need to throw it away. Just close the freezer and try to move on. Question three, can I mix multiple temperatures of breast milk? Let's say you're like me and you are not a prolific breast milk producer. I used four ounce bottles when I pumped, but let's not kid ourselves that I was ever producing that much at once. Sometimes there would be half-filled bottles. Was it okay to combine the new two ounces, still warm, with the old? The guidelines say no, and many people wonder why. The simple reason is that this will warm up the cold milk. When it's warmer, it's more susceptible to bacterial growth. However, we established at the top that generally breast milk is quite stable, and storage even at room temperature can happen for a fairly long time. Adding breast milk to a bottle, therefore slightly warming it for a brief period while leaving it in the refrigerator, this is just a very small change. Put differently, if you think of yourself as having six to eight hours of room temperature storage before you get concerned, the briefly warmed period when the milk comes to the same temperature can be counted against this amount of time. All in all, this risk is entirely theoretical at best. Question four, can I reuse it after having used some? This is in many ways the most interesting question. When your baby drinks from a bottle, bacteria from their mouth can get into the milk. For this reason, the baseline bacterial load will be higher right after they've drunk the milk compared with right before. The larger bacterial load will mean, of course, more possibilities for bacterial multiplication. This is why a CDC recommends throwing the milk away. On the other hand, this is also the most interesting question from the standpoint of your life. It is really, really frustrating to throw away pumped milk. This question is in principle answerable. What you need to do is have some babies drink breast milk, measure the bacterial content before drinking and then after drinking and storing for various lengths of time. When I went looking for evidence like this, the first thing I found was evidence on formula. I wrote about this during the formula shortage. There are at least two recent academic papers that had adults drink baby formula and then measured the bacterial content of the formula after drinking and then after storage. In these cases, even after up to 24 hours of storage in the fridge, the samples did not produce high bacterial levels. This is encouraging, but it's about formula and not breast milk. However, we have other evidence that breast milk is much less prone to bacterial growth than formula. Putting these facts together, we would rationally conclude that the safe storage time of partially drunk breast milk might be higher than partially drunk formula. None of this published work, though, does the analysis we want on breast milk. In my searching, though, I did find one absolutely amazing article an undergraduate senior thesis from 1998, in which the author did precisely what I wanted. As a side note, I love everything about this article. The author dedicates it to her husband, Fred, quote, who sold his beloved Jeep so I could afford to be here. She also thanks her daughter, Emily, for giving her the idea to do the project. It's just an extremely impressive piece of work. Seriously, Rachel Brousseau, you're fantastic. Okay, 
back to the senior thesis. So she recruited six women with babies and had them feed their babies from bottles of pumped milk. She tested the milk before feeding and after feeding, and then after storing it in the fridge for up to 48 hours. She looked for bacterial colony count in various ways. The author of this article does many things I think are really excellent. She basically tries to get the women to express and store milk in the normal way. The milk is stored in their regular refrigerators. She uses bottles cleaned in the dishwasher, quote, because this is the method many women use to clean their bottles. Here is what she finds. She finds that the bacterial counts are largely unaffected by feeding, and they barely move even in 48 hours after storage in the fridge. This is evidence that milk could be stored this way for a fairly long time without bacterial growth. This is a single unpublished study of six women performed by an undergraduate. I'm not suggesting that the CDC change its policy, but on top of the logic, I would personally be comfortable storing partially used breast milk in the fridge for a reasonable period. And I also did that. The bottom line here. It's important to say that there are some situations in which it is necessary to be extremely careful about pathogens in milk. This includes when a baby is preterm, when the NICU is involved, when we're discussing donor milk. But for healthy babies, the guidelines issued by the CDC seem to be overly cautious in terms of the actual evidence on bacterial growth in breast milk. Breast milk appears, based on what we know, to be quite robust. That what we know, though, is too limited, especially if we take this last question about refeeding milk. The study that that undergraduate did 24 years ago is basically sound. It would not be difficult to repeat it with, say, 100 women, even 30 women, in a professional lab. These questions are in many ways even easier than the mastitis issues I wrote about a few weeks ago. You don't need a randomized trial. You literally just need basic lab equipment and some breastfeeding women. But you might ask, what does it matter? Why not just package your milk in tiny one-ounce bags and dole it out as needed? The answer is, that is annoying. And it's infeasible in many care settings. A lot of people send their children to childcare with packaged breast milk, only to find that a lot of it was thrown away after being partially used. This may be very wasteful. Each individual instance of it, it's a small cost. But altogether, over millions of women breastfeeding for thousands of hours every year, it simply adds up. We can do better on evidence, and we should. Thanks for listening. If you like what you heard, subscribe to Parent Data in your favorite podcast app, and rate and review the show in Apple Podcasts. You can subscribe to the whole newsletter for free at www.parentdata.org. Talk to you soon.